Uh, hello there, everybody. It is I, Die Hard Gamer, and I'm back once again with another unboxing video. Uh, I got my second game box in the mail from a kid short you can today. Uh, it did take a little while, and I was getting a little bit worried, but thankfully it arrived without any trouble, so that is great. So, without further ado, and by the way, before I get started, if you folks haven't checked out Kid Shoryuken's YouTube channel, you should definitely go and check out his YouTube channel because he's definitely put out some amazing content, even though he hasn't really been putting out a lot of stuff lately because he's had to move recently, and I, I, I can understand how much of a big pain in the neck that can be, so... But if you folks haven't already checked out Kid Shoryuken's YouTube channel, go ahead and check out his YouTube channel. There's a lot of great uh, reviews as well as gaming recommendations for those of you who would like to get into Japanese import games. So... Without further ado, let's get started here, folks. First up is Kamen Rider Fies for the PS2. It is also based on the Kamen Rider show of the same name. I did see a video of all of the finishing attacks from this game on a YouTube channel a, a while back. It was more than quite a while back, so... Definitely glad to have this game in my collection right now. So, that is awesome. Definitely can't wait to play this game on my Japanese PS2 Slim. Um, put, put that right there. <laughs> Next up is Kamen Rider Hibiki, also for the PlayStation 2. And uh, this game also has a second disc inside of it as well. As, ah! I almost pinched myself there. As you folks can see here, and it's for a Taiko no Tatsujin game, so... I don't know which Taiko no Tatsujin game it is for, because I'm not very big on that franchise, unfortunately, but there it is. For, so... If any of you, uh, any of you folks out there are fans of the Taiko no Tatsujin franchise, or Taiko Drum Master, as it's known here in America, pick this game up so you can uh, play, try out the second disc. And also... Common Rider Hibiki originally wasn't supposed to be a common a common rider, but executive meddling ended up rearing its ugly head, and a lot of things changed around the episode 30 mark. So, if you folks want to go ahead and check out Common Rider Hibiki, go ahead and watch up to episode 30. So. That's all I'm going to say about this game, other, other than I can't wait to check it out and play it on my PS2 Slim as well. Um. Uh. 
And last up for the PlayStation 2 Kamen Rider games, we have Kamen Rider Blade, also for the PlayStation 2, which is also based on the Kamen Rider series of the same name. Kamen Rider Blade was Spade Ace's favorite Kamen Rider. And for those of you out there who don't know, uh, Spade Ace was a part of RVT Entertainment on Toka Riffs Live. And unfortunately, he passed away recently. So, And I know that he would have really loved this game. He would have really loved to have a copy of this game. So... Uh... I will definitely be playing this in Spade Ace's honor at some point. So, there's all of the Common Rider games that I have for the PlayStation 2 at the moment. And the last but certainly not least is this game right here. Uh... Another Century Episode, the final, which is another mech game for the PlayStation 2. I did try out Gun Griffin 2 for the Sega Saturn, uh, but unfortunately all of that game's text is in Japanese, but I did have fun trying that game out. I did have fun in trying to stumble my way with that game, so... And, uh, I know I'll definitely have fun with this game. And it might be a little bit more challenging because this game is also made by the folks over at From Software, who are responsible for the Souls series as well as Bloodborne, so... As well as some other games that didn't get a release outside of Japan as well. So, I definitely can't wait to check this game out. So, that's all the games that I got from my PS2. Up next are a couple of PSP games. First up, we have Macross Ace Frontier for the PSP. I do know that there are quite a bit of Macross games out there that didn't get a release outside of Japan. Uh, this franchise is also known as Robotech here in the U.S. So, uh, I definitely can't wait to start playing this game. And I did know that, uh, Kid... I do know, rather, that Kid Shore, you can reviewed a couple of Macross games on his channel for the Import Game of the Day segment, so... I would also like to have those Macross games, if that's possible, in the future, so... Definitely can't wait to start playing this and check this game out for myself. And next up is a next up is a Dragon Ball Z game for the PlayStation Portable as well. I don't know what the Japanese text says. Hopefully Kid Shoryuken can help me out with that when he sees this video. I do know that it's a Dragon Ball Z game. I don't know if it's one of the Budokai games that ended up coming out for the PSP here in America. I'll definitely have to do some research into that, but I'm glad to have this game in my uh, Japanese collection for the PSP games, so that is great. Definitely can't wait to try this game out either. And last but not least, I have a couple of 
PlayStation Vita games. First up, we have the Japanese version of Dragon Quest Heroes 2 for the PlayStation Vita. I don't know if this got a North American release here for the Vita in North America. I'm not sure, so... But I do know that there is a YouTuber out there who has been playing the PlayStation 4 version of this it came on her YouTube channel, so... I definitely can't wait to start playing this. I have a feeling that I'm going to need a walkthrough guide in order to play through this, because... This is entirely in Japanese, so... I'm kind of screwed in that regard, so... But I'm definitely going to give this game a try regardless, though. So, there is that. Ooh, and last but certainly not least is God Eater 2 Rage Burst. Also for the PlayStation Vita. And I don't really know much about this game. Uh, it does look interesting on the back, though. So, I'm not sure what kind of a game this is, but I'm definitely interested. And I definitely can't wait to start playing it, so... Uh, I will absolutely give this game a try for my PlayStation Vita. Oh, PlayStation Vita, you had so much potential, but unfortunately, Sony ended up squandering it. Just like they did the PSP. And that is all of the games that I ended up getting in my game box for this month. Um... I'm kind of surprised that there weren't any Sega Saturn games out, uh, in the, in the game box. Like there was before, but, um... It kind of sucks that, uh, book-offs and hard-offs aren't really... Don't really have much in the way of Sega Saturn stuff right now, which is really unfortunate. Because... Regardless of how the Sega Saturn did, it was a great console for its time. So, hopefully, um, hopefully there will be more uh, Sega Saturn games out there in the wild at Book Offs and Hard Offs. And as much as I know that um, Kid Shoryuken doesn't like going to Super Potato... Because of the fact that, well, Super Potato's prices over there in Akihabara are jacked up. And they're having a hard time getting business right now. It's like, that might be the only option, unfortunately, so... Also, um, if you see any, uh, Ultraman games out there in the wild, Kid sure you can, uh, please pick those up. I would greatly appreciate that. Um, what else? And also, oh my goodness. I know this is, I know this is asking for a miracle here, but... If you do end up finding a copy of Akuma Joden Setsu for the Famicom, I would really like a copy of that game. Yes, I know it's included in the Castlevania Anniversary Collection or the Akuma Jo Dracula Anniversary Collection, but I'd, I'd really like to have, to have a physical copy of that game for preservation purposes. And, uh, what else is there? 
Oh, yeah. If you find any, uh, Japanese Nintendo 64 games out there that are exclusive to the Nintendo 64, hmm, I would greatly appreciate it, that if you could pick some of those up for me as well. Yes, I know I'm holding up Super Mario 64, but I don't really feel like going over there and picking out, um, one of my... Japanese Nintendo 64 carts. Also, for all of you people out there that want to mod your Nintendo 64, this part right here is the culprit that's preventing you folks from playing Japanese Nintendo 64 games. And yes, you can drill into the, you can basically drill these parts off or uh, basically file them off with a Dremel or whatever, but don't do that. Don't do that. Don't get a Dremel or, or uh, file these parts down or anything like that because there are 3D printed uh, cartridge slot trays for the Nintendo 64 that have this part, have these two things here removed. So, and they're really cheap on eBay right now. So, if you want to get one of those 3D printed Nintendo 64 cartridge slot trays that will allow you to play both North American and Japanese Nintendo 64 games. That's what you want to go for. I'll put a link to one of them in the description of this video below. So, And I'll also put a description... Or I'll also put the link to my Twitch channel in the description as well. All of the PlayStation 2 games that I showed off, I'll definitely be, be... I'll definitely be playing those on my Twitch channel. My goodness, the heat here is starting to get to me, folks. So, please uh, follow me on my Twitch channel. I'll definitely be putting the link to that in my dis in the description of this video after I get it uploaded and also now that I remember there is a Dragon Ball Z game on the Sega Saturn that I would also like a uh, kid sure you can to keep an eye out for as well and I know that it's also going to be asking for a miracle, but um, with uh, some of the shooters that you that uh, Kid Shoryuken has covered on his channel for Import Game of the Day, I would really like some of those as well as some of the platformers out there for the Saturn. So. I, I know that asking for the uh, shoot some of the gr uh, great shooters out there for the Sega Saturn are going to be asking for a miracle, but I do know that some of the other fighting games out there for the Sega Saturn would definitely be more reasonable, hopefully. If the prices for those on the aftermarket on the aftermarket haven't rocketed sky high out there in Japan by now, so. There's definitely quite a lot of stuff that I'd like for uh, Kid Shoryuken to keep an eye out for. So, um, without all of that out of the way, uh, I'll see you guys in September for the next Game Box video. And, uh, please feel free to check out my Twitch channel. I just reached affiliate recently, so 
I'm doing some stuff behind the scenes with that. So, until next time, this has been Die Hard Gamer signing out. And for everybody out there in the Pacific Northwest who is watching this video, stay cool and drink lots of water. That doesn't go for everybody in the Pacific Northwest. That also goes to everybody out there in Japan right now. Because summers in Japan are absolutely miserable from what I heard. So, I'll see you guys in September for the next Game Box unboxing video. And I'll see you guys next time.